Love Chargers, I'm Amanda. And I'm Matthew Sand, and welcome back to another episode of WRSN. With Valentine's Day having just passed, it might be interesting to take a look into the history of the famous holiday. The story is Stranger Than You Think. Valentine's Day is the holiday of romance celebrated by tons of cultures around the world. But despite its near universal appeal, its origins remain shrouded in mystery. Despite the mystery surrounding Valentine's Day, all historical sources seem to agree on the basics. Valentine's Day is named after St. Valentine, a 3rd century clergyman turned martyr, popularly known for his affinity towards romance. Some sources say he was a Roman priest, beheaded for marrying Christian couples despite the many anti-Christian laws. Other sources say that he was known for marrying young lovers in a time when marrying had been outlawed, or that he was really known for helping Christians escape Roman prisons. All sources seem to agree that he was killed for his crimes on February 14th, around the year 270 AD, which later became Valentine's Day. But his story doesn't end there. Did you know he also became the patron saint of epilepsy and beekeeping? The stories behind this are especially strange. St. Valentine reportedly became the saint of epilepsy in German-speaking countries due to his name's similarity to the word fallen. Think of it as Fallentine. Many epileptics were referred to as fallen, and praying to St. Valentine after such events led to a false correlation with him curing the illness. This pattern repeated itself until he was cemented as the saint of epilepsy. But Valentine as the saint of beekeeping gets stranger still. Funnily enough, the connection seems to have very little to do with Valentine himself. Beekeeping, and likewise honey, seems to have been introduced to make Valentine more interesting and festive, so that his holiday could replace the Roman holiday Lupercalia. It is also theorized that the honey and beekeeping are one big metaphor for springtime and the birds and the bees, but sources are unclear. I guess the sweetness of honey really just brings people together. One final historical hijinks. In 1940, at the outbreak of the Second World War, the British named a medium tank after St. Valentine. Because love, marriage, beekeeping, and epilepsy are all things that I associate with an angry metal box. Wow. Truth truly is stranger than fiction. Now, on to some sports news. Tonight, the boys' varsity soccer team has a home game against Heritage at 7. Make sure you buy your tickets at GoFan.com. Also, the boys' varsity lacrosse team has a game at Palm Beach Central at 7. Good luck, Chargers! Keeping in touch with friends has been difficult during the pandemic, but many have been united through their shared love of video games. Let's go to Ethan to learn about how games have been helping console us during the pandemic. Playing video games can be a bonding activity with friends and family, with titles such as Animal Crossing with our eyes, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Jackbox Party, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, providing a simple yet engaging multiplayer experience. One title in particular, Among Us, has taken the world by storm, having roughly half a billion players play the game in November 2020. For those who never played or heard of Among Us, it is a party slash social deduction game where 4 to 10 players are on a ship trying to do tasks to launch their ship, but one of the players is an imposter. Players can call a group meeting, voice their thoughts, and kick off who they think is the imposter. The crew wins by voting off all the imposters, while the imposters win by killing all crewmates. What makes Among Us stand out from the traditional party titles like Mario Party or Monopoly is a simple premise, integrated party system, and affordable price. No need to understand what each space on a board does or setting up the initial game. A download from Steam, App, and Google Play Store or Nintendo eShop is all you need to get started, with the mobile versions being free to play with ads and the PC and Switch version costing $5. Each task is thoroughly explained to the player, such as connecting wires or scanning an ID card, and with the simple stick and action button, it is an easy title to get a hold of. There is a passcode system to enter a room, and since the game is crossplay across PC, mobile, and consoles, Anyone can join their preferred platform of choice, one of the biggest positives to come out of gaming recently. As someone who is mostly into action games, Among Us is a fun pace breaker to play when the battle gets too heated. I remember playing a similar mode like this before on Game & Wario, where four players watch who's the one imposter stealing fruit from the Wii U gamepad. It's nice to see asymmetric multiplayer return to a larger audience, as it has created some clever methods of play for family and friends who want to duke it amongst themselves 
while having a group work together to stop a greater evil. This has been Ethan Hong for WRSN. Now back to the studio. Today, let's wish the following Chargers a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Chargers, and that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching another episode of WRSN. Wait, we almost got ahead of ourselves. Today is National Cabbage Day. To celebrate our love of cabbages, we placed a few in every scene of the show. Let us know how many you found. Oh, my cabbages!